Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. Now, in today's episode, I wanted to share with you a technique that I sometimes use in my readings as I'm looking at charts uh, of people. It's a technique that I learnt in Western astrology. And I'm pretty sure the title of this video, I've got it on my whiteboard in front of me, I think House Needs and Achieving Balance, something along those lines. Um, I'm going to call this, but really what I want to do in this episode is explore the needs of the houses. Can we map that out and how can we use this when reading a chart? So what I'm going to do is on the screen in front of me now, I'm going to put up um, this diagram and I've got it in front of me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through what this is. So basically, I've got at the top title up here, House Needs. What I've mapped out here, and, and I've just put two needs per house, and I'll take you through them all and I'll just explain what I'm doing. I've written the needs of the house, so what might a person's needs be if, let's say, for example, they have a lot of planetary energy concentrated in that particular house. So in the first house, let's say you've got four planets in there. Well, throughout your life, you know, a lot of planetary energy is concentrated there. So you'll find that the needs of that house or sign, you could use this either way. So it'll be Aries, right? So the needs of Aries or the needs of the first house, these will be predominant in that person's life. So if you have a lot of planets in the first house, well, you'll feel the need to be alone maybe, or you might feel the need to create your identity or really express your opinions. Uh, that type of thing, right? Um, second house, you know, what are the needs there? To accumulate wealth, to care for or to tend to things or to curate even, all that, that kind of, those kind of energies there. We're looking at wealth, uh, even art and family and food and things like that, right? Um, third house, to share knowledge, to act, to simplify. And now a really cool thing when you're looking at these is to look at the opposite. And this was what I learned in Western astrology, that you look at the opposite. And if you're too much concentrated in, say, for example, the third house where we are now, you know, you've got a lot happening here. Well, to balance your life out, you might want to dip your toe into the opposite house. So if the third house is, you know, the need there is to share knowledge with your peers, that kind of thing, or to act, to do something, to simplify, right? What's the opposite of that? Well, that's you know, to intellectualize, to accumulate knowledge. In one of the drafts of this, I wrote something like um, to create systems of thought, right? So imagine if, and if you're in that very academic house of the ninth house, um, you know, you might have a need to hop into the third house and to simplify and to be simpler and to be easier about what it is that you do. So I'm going to put this diagram in a web page so that you can access it easily and check it out. As I say, I've only done two little needs per house, but there's heaps. You could write a great big list of them. And I'll show you, I'll demonstrate how this works with some charts. Now I've got some client charts up on my screen and what I'll do is I'll draw them out and I'll kind of talk you through how I use this. And you can tell me in the comments below if this kind of thing will be useful for you or if this kind of thinking will be useful for you. And this is particularly useful if you've got quite a concentration of planets in one house, you know, and you want to look at it via the house, you want to look at it via the sign as well. So let's draw, so I'm going to draw, so we've got Mercury, we're going to have Venus, we're going to have Ketu, ah, now Ketu and um, Moon, but well, that doesn't look like the Moon, but just, it's the Moon, hang on, and then we're going to have Rahu here, okay, so, oh, and I'm going to call this, so we're going to say Pisces and Virgo, so, I mean, you're either looking at the 12th house, or you're looking at Pisces Virgo however you want to do it you know um, do it both both ways right so let's say you got Pisces in the first house you got all of these in the first house well you'd look at first house needs and seventh house needs and you'd look at Pisces needs and Virgo needs too um, so Virgo Rahu is here 
right? Wherever Rahu is, na naturally life is going to make sure that you focus some of your attention on the needs of this house. You will, you will have to engage here. You will have to do work here. But we have all this, look at all this planetary energy in Pisces. And if we, have, if we go back to our diagram, let's bring up the diagram again. I'll put it in front of me. Uh, what's the 12th house needs to escape to relax boundaries right now I've worked with this person and this person does all of that really brilliantly that is really really easy for this person to do right really easy for this client to escape to relax boundaries to understand all the spiritual stuff hugely Jupiterian person great big visionary right but what this person needs to do and especially because Rahu is in that sixth house here, this person needs to be meticulous and to achieve order, right? So, and I'll put the diagram up for that. So if this person can do the Virgoan things, right, they're going to bring balance to the life and that's going to be a good thing, right? You want to do that. Um, it's, so wherever your Rahu is, you're going to need to engage in that house. Let's take a look at another example. I know another client who has a lot of planets in the 8th house. And it's really interesting because this person is spending all their time letting go of old stuff, right? There's a big project going on of letting go of old stuff. And it's a lifelong project <laughs> and there's a lot to do. So we've got the moon here, we've got Mars here, and we've got Venus here, right? So that's just three in eighth house. Scorpio. So if we have a look at the diagram again that I drew up earlier, so this person is definitely spending a lot of time learning how to let go and how to hide. But what's happening is this person's getting stuck in that house and nothing new is happening. So sometimes if in life you're very stuck or you're delayed or nothing's happening, dip a toe into that opposite house. Go to the opposite house and do some of the activities there or, or try to meet some of the needs of whatever's happening there. So this person could really benefit from accumulating wealth um, or... Or say, for example, caring for or tending to, like curating um, their possessions. So this person's having a problem. They have to let go of all these possessions, but they're finding that they're not making any progress doing that. They're stuck. There's delay. There's a lot of stuck energy, a lot of delay energy. Another example, um, another client of mine who has, say, for example, and this I've checked out with these people. Um, in one-on-one -on -one sessions and yes I mean you know they, they when you say to them have you tried doing a bit of the opposite house needs they're like oh god yeah that's exactly what I need to do to balance out my life so let's have a look at this one and this is quite a common one that I've seen in a lot of people they got a lot of planetary energy here in the Maybe I'm just a magnet for these people I don't know but I get a lot of clients who've got a lot of planets in the seventh house and um, Let's see, I'm going to bring up her chart. She has got Mercury, uh, Mars, Sun, and Venus here. Look at the concentration of energy here. How big is that? There's so much. There's just so much planetary energy here. So what can you say? This person, you know, without looking at too much else, you know, this person is quite obsessed about relationships. That's all they do. They think about their relationship, their partner. It could also be business, right? But I do know for a fact this person is, is always thinking about relationships. And relationships are a big thing in this person's life. So in order to balance the life, this person, I'll bring the diagram up again. Let's have a look at the first house. I mean, this person could do with spending some time alone or really getting to know what that is. Um, or getting good at that you know even and there might not be planetary energy here but it it could provide you with balance because one of the ways that I look at a chart one of the ways that I see planets is that 
when you've got a planet anywhere, like you've got, let's say you've got the moon here, right? You're running that axis. Like, okay, the moon's here, but you're, run, you're running the axis. Like, that's one of the ways that I see this. It's not like, okay, that's empty and nothing. No, and you have to look at the lords and all that kind of thing, which I always do. Um, so the lords of the houses, absolutely, that's, that's everything, right? Um, you know, lords, bhavat bhavam, there's, I could go on. There's so much to look at. But this is, I, all I wanted to do was draw your attention to the axis and to say, read the line. So yeah, you got something sitting here, read the whole line. And it could be that like, you know, it's that yin and yang, I'm not gonna draw it because I'm terrible at drawing, but that yin and yang principle that like, you know, you got planetary energy here, you might need a little drop of what's here. And that will just, that, that alone, that little drop will make all the difference, will bring you the balance that you need. So that's something to consider as you look at a chart and I just wanted to share that with you and I want to share this diagram with you don't forget there are more needs than what I've put down so maybe that could be something that you'd like to contemplate and as always please feel free to share in the comments below your thoughts um, you know what it is that you're learning your experience with the houses their needs all that kind of thing I'd love to hear from you so thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you next time.